What's up, everybody? We are back. John Delarose here. Delarose.com. That's D-E-L-A-R-R-O-Z.com. Head to the link in my description below and get a free graphic novel from me. And my graphic novels never go out of print. So you can go to Amazon, grab the ones you like, check out awesome independent comic book content by me, and you'll have a good time. I guarantee it. Support the channel, read comics, go get my books. <laughs> All right. I wanted to do this for a while. I've been thinking about this list uh, in my head for quite a bit because there's just a need for content about non-Marvel and DC graphic novels, and there's a bunch of out-of-print ones which are getting really hard to find. I actually ended up with a list of around 15 to 20 of these before I actually made the final cut here, but I put together my top 10 just to go over what I want. Now, this is only what I want because uh, there, there's a bunch that you might want not on this list also, but I already have them. <laughs> and so I'll be selfish about that because this is my channel and I can do that. So let's get to these graphic novels because it's more interesting talking about those than me rambling about uh, different things. Here we go. All right, number 10 on my top graphic novel wants that are out of print right now, hard to find, here we go. The Complete Badger, Volume 1. Now, this is Mike Barron's Badger. This is an 80s comic book about a superhero who's got some uh, schizophrenia, basically. And very fun stuff, very exciting stuff. And these thin trade paperbacks, believe it or not, are out of print and commanding high dollars on the market. I would actually like a much better collection of these. IDW didn't even finish the whole series, they call it the Complete Badger, but really only about a third of the Badger got collected in this. So this is the best we got for now, but I am interested in collected editions and this is what I want. So there we go. Next, number nine, Chew, Smorgasbord Edition, Volume One. Chew is one of my favorite series of all time by John Lehman and Rob Gilroy. And those two guys put out one of those giant like library sized volumes of Chew. They called it the Smorgasbord Edition. And the volume one is really hard to find. Two and three, which complete the series, are not all that expensive. But volume one is up there and crazy, and it needs a reprint. It makes sense, because who's going to buy volume two or volume three if they don't have volume one to be able to get? It would be a good thing. I love this art. I love everything in it. So I want a big oversized collected edition like this. They have the Omnivore editions in print, but those are standard size, so it's just not as interesting as these. Now, for those who don't know what Chu is, it's a really bizarre book about a guy who can see what the dead saw in its last moments when he chews their flesh. So it's uh, he calls it the, uh, the cannibal bird flu book, <laughs> and it's very fun and very funny. All right. Next is one you may not have heard of. This is called Jeremiah. It's by a French artist uh, called Herman is his last name. And Dark Horse reprinted these back in the day because J. Michael Straczynski made a TV series on, I believe it was Showtime, about this. And it starred Luke Perry. Very good show. I loved it. I didn't know it was based on a comic until recently, and I was just told that. So these are really excruciatingly hard to find, especially this volume one. Much like the Badger, they have not reprinted everything. These three volumes that Dark Horse put out actually only covered... I think about half the series. So there's a lot of content there still to be gone and uh, gotten. And of course, a lot of this stuff is really hard to find. Uh, I'd like to at least get these back into print so I can be able to read these. Next is the complete Oko or Oko. I don't know how to pronounce that. Now I know nothing about this book other than the fact that Omar from Near Mint Condition actually put it as one of his top five underrated graphic novels. And uh, like a lot of things on this list, it's completely out of print. This one, I can't even gauge a price for what, what it's supposed to go for out of print because it's impossible to find. There are no copies of it anywhere. I can't find one on eBay. I can't find one on Amazon. They're just gone. So this is a crying shame. And since Near Mint Condition is promoting it, it's got to be a pretty good book. And I want to check it out. The art looks pretty sweet. It looks like some sort of uh, Japanese uh, design, which is fun. And I want to read it. That's all. Next, Usagi Yojimbo Special Edition. So Usagi Yojimbo has gone through like a volume one and a volume two. Volume one was done by Fanagraphics and volume two was done by Dark Horse. Now both of them had special editions come out and both of them are pretty out of print on that level. But the Fanagraphics hardcover for the special edition are way out of print, way expensive. 
All you can get are these thin trade paperbacks of it, and Usagi Yojimbo deserves a better format. So I would like to see this come back into print to be able to get these beautiful hardcover editions of Stan Sakai's uh, wonderful rabbit samurai story. I think everybody would want this also. <laughs> Popeye was a Jeep. Okay, these fan of graphics, again, also put out these wonderful Popeye strips, which are from the original Popeye the Sailor Man uh, comic strips back in the 1920s and 1930s. And they did them in a the giant oversized version also. Just beautiful to read, wonderful to have. And one volume is really, really difficult to find. I think it's going for $300 plus on Amazon or eBay. It's the label Y on its uh, spine. All the, all the Popeye books have a, one of their letters, and it spells out Popeye on their spines. And this one is excruciating to find, so I want a reprint of this to be able to complete my collection. All right, we're getting into the top four. That was number five. This is number four, TMNT The Works Volume 1, Color Classics. Now, Eastman and Laird originally put out the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in black and white when they were doing their books. And so those ultimate editions of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which are oversized hardcovers, are well into print. They get printed all the time. Everybody reads them. It's a lot of fun. And it's good stuff. So uh, I like the color because I just like colors, even though it's not the way that these were originally do, intended to be read. Uh, these are my preferred way of collecting these. I have all the other volumes, but volume one is precariously hard to find and is, of course, out of print. It didn't help that there's binding issues with this original print run. So a lot of the books that you do find have like some of the pages coming out, have the, have the spine kind of messed up because they were not bound very well. They need to do a reprint just to make a better quality version of this so people can have a complete collection of these. Now, it's not as crazy expensive as some of the other stuff on this list, but I still don't want to buy one and risk having a bad binding problem at this juncture, so I would like to see this come back into print. Number three, Phantom the Gold Key Years, Volume 1. The Phantom went through uh, an actual comic book version, which is based on the comic strip, of course, which started in the 1930s. And they had a full run going from the 60s into the 70s. It started with Gold Key uh, producing it, and then it went to King Comics, and then it went to Charlton Comics. Hermes Press did these wonderful hardcovers, which covers all of it. And uh, I've managed to get the Charlton books. But the King and the Gold Key years are out of print. The Gold Key years especially are commanding two to $300 per book at this point. And for, I think it's like eight, nine issues of content each, that's really painful. So I can't justify buying one of those. These need to come back into print just because everybody should be reading The Phantom from the Gold Key years. It's pretty cool stuff. Excellent pulp hero. I want to see uh, a nice edition of this uh, for everybody. There we go. Number two. BPRD, Plague of Frogs, Volume 3, Hardcover. This is part of the Hellboy universe, and the BPRD is like this investigatory group that he kind of works for. And it was, and it spun off into its own book uh, with its Plague of Frogs storyline. Now, these books got really hard to find, and Volumes 3 and 4 in hardcover are also impossible to find. They're available in softcover, I know, but I like hardcovers. I like fancier, nicer books that are a little higher quality. And this is a no-brainer for Dark Horse to just print. It would print money so fast if they just reprinted these. I'm really hope, holding out for it. I know that they put their Hellboy Library Editions oversized books in eternal printing, which means it never really goes away and everybody can always get those, which I really like. I would love to see the same thing here with these hardcovers. Uh, so hopefully somebody at Dark Horse listens to me on this. And my number one, Echo by Terry Moore, The Complete Edition. This is Terry Moore's kind of like superhero story, and it was really great. It was around 30-something issues, as I recall, back in the day. I read them, actually, as the issues came out. But he came out with a complete edition, and, of course, you can find the soft cover, which <laughs> is true about a lot of the books on this list. But there is no hardcover edition to be found. When it goes up on eBay, it's hundreds of dollars. I just want an extra hardcover version of this, and I know there's a couple hundred people out there who want it also. Now, Terry Moore periodically seems to have been reprinting some of his hardcovers and putting them up as exclusives on his abstract store. So I think he can get these small print runs done and get it going. But this is a great story, and it is honestly my most wanted book. I have the softcover edition, but I literally have hardcover of every other Terry Moore book, and it just stands out like a sore thumb. I can't handle that with my OCD. It bothers me. <laughs> but it's a great story, beautiful art, and again, everybody deserves a nice edition of it. 
So those are my top 10 wants list. If you go through and you just like look at these on eBay or whatever, you're going to see that these all go for hundreds of dollars each. It's, it's impossible to really get these. And it would be nice just to be able to get some of these great comics that aren't Marvel and DC into people's hands so that we can kind of get an industry where we're paying attention to the great works on independent levels. That's what I try to do on the channel. That's what we're all about here. We want independent comics to succeed. And the best way to do so is to give those books in formats that people want. All right, let me know what your top wants are, and I would be interested to see those. Hit that like and subscribe button, and we'll be back soon.